Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm here in Morzine in France, which is just on the border of Switzerland. Yesterday I spent the whole day traveling uh, from London Gatwick to Geneva and then Geneva here. And I'm here with a, a really good friend of mine, Ali Spear. I've known Ali for like, pretty much all my life. So he's going to be skiing, I'm going to be painting. And he's been here before, so he kind of knows the scenery, he knows you know the best mountains to climb up and things like that so he's going to show me to a lake which i've seen pictures of it and it looks incredibly beautiful so i'm very excited to paint there it is cold but not quite as cold as i thought but i'm still prepared i've got my ski socks on and everything like that so so hopefully the cold won't be too um too intense and i'll still be able to do a decent painting in the weather um so yeah, remember to please subscribe to my channel and I'm going to show you my journey to this lake up in the mountains. So I've been shown to the lake and it is a very impressive landscape behind me. Unfortunately it is raining quite a bit and there is this sort of sideways sleet, half snow, half rain which is going to be a bit unpleasant to paint in. Also in the distance there is a snow capped mountain which when I arrived I could see quite clearly but now the clouds, this atmospheric cloud mist has just completely covered over that mountain. You can't really see it's there. I am hoping that some of the mist will lift and we will be able to see that mountain in the background because it definitely will become a key part of the composition if we can see it. Also, the lake, um, most of it's frozen, but we do have some water which is moving. You can see the wind passing across the water in the foreground, so that should be quite nice to paint. I'm going to be standing under this shelter a bit which is actually very convenient because even though I brought an umbrella I don't want to get covered in this sleet cold freezing rain for however many hours it's going to take me to do this painting so I'm going to be protected from the weather to some extent where I'm painting and I'm going to start painting I'm going to try and get in the composition and I really am praying that these clouds which are encasing the mountain will lift a bit. So that said, even still with the clouds, it's still quite a nice composition. You have these really steep diagonal uh, mountains covered in trees, kind of all coming in and meeting in, uh, in the center of the painting. But yeah, let's go. Let's start painting. I'm painting on a canvas panel that I've toned to a neutral gray. And I've toned the paint in just before I began to paint, so this underlayer or imprimatura is still wet. And here I'm just wiping away the section of the sky, as this is the lightest part of my composition. So by wiping away this grey, it gives me a quick value impression of the overall scene, which is a good starting point to work on. I start by painting the mountain, which is covered in trees on the left hand side of the painting. This is the mountain which is closest to the foreground. So it's going to have more contrast. The darks are going to be darker. It's also going to have more color chroma and more color variety than the mountains in the background. Because as things recede, especially with this atmospheric mist, they get grayer, they also get lighter in value and start to get lost into the sky. I'm now painting the layer of ice, which is over most of the lake, and it has quite a nice pale green colour to it. And the sections where the ice has melted and there's water showing through are quite a lot darker as they're reflecting the trees in the water. I'm now painting the lightest sections of the water, 
which reflect in the sky and they have this real bright shining glow to them and in order to create this effect I'm painting the dark reflections quite dark so that in contrast this light will appear brighter and I'm using mostly titanium white to paint this light section. To paint the sky I start by painting the lighter sections of the sky using titanium white and a touch of my cadmium yellow as these areas are catching a bit of sunlight so they have a warm glow to them and once I painted in these lighter sections I go in with a slightly darker mix which has a more purple hue to it and even though this is representing the darker shadows within the clouds it's still very much in the light value range of the painting as when I squint the whole sky is a very bright section so I'm careful not to overstate the darkness of the clouds. I'm also painting some of this cloud paint mix over the contour of some of the mountains in the distance, as when I look at the scene, the clouds do move over the mountain in areas, as because these mountains are so big and high up, the sky really interacts with them and I also like this effect as it helps add scale to the painting and make a more clear image as it helps push the mountains back further into the distance and it also helps create that atmospheric and epic scale impression to the landscape. So finally the clouds have lifted a bit. I can now see that snow-capped mountain in the distance in the center of my painting. I'm trying to bring out some of this white snow which is getting lit by the sun and also some of the light blue shapes of the pine trees which are on top of the mountain. And I'm trying to keep the trees still quite light as if I make them too dark it's gonna bring this mountain too close into the foreground. And I am battling a bit to bring out the white of the snow as I've already gone very light in the sky so it doesn't give me much value range to work with. In order to create this really bright light effect I'm actually using my palette knife to put on pure titanium white onto the painting and this helps just bring out some of that lightness of the snow and I'm also using my palette knife to bring out a bit more of the light shining through the clouds as well and I often find that once you've painted onto the surface of the painting quite a lot it can be hard to paint really bright lights on top of this with a brush as the brush will mix with the layers underneath and this can dull down the paint a bit however if you use your palette knife you can layer the paint on thickly without mixing with the paint underneath. So I'm using this technique to bring out some of the lightest lights on the mountain and in the sky. So I hope you enjoyed that video of me painting the frozen lake with the mountain view behind it. I'm now going to go up to that snowy mountain that you saw in the background and paint another painting. Check out part two and join me on my journey as I travel to one of the biggest mountains in the region to paint a spectacular view in extreme conditions.